Hello, hello. Good evening to all, and thank you for joining me tonight here in the Mingles of Evil Wednesday night. Uh, in the longest day of the year, the solstice, the, the solstice of summer, the summer solstice, okay? <clears throat> Hope you're having a great time, and today I didn't announce I was coming to speak or, or what topic I was coming to speak about but so let's make it a surprise today I'm speaking about proof overwhelming proof of afterlife okay afterlife and I'm gonna be speaking about death that topic that I've spoken about before but perhaps still right there's a lot of uh, lagoons or mysteries behind it, okay? And I'm gonna try to shed some information, some additional information about this topic uh, so that you can feel more comfortable and understand fully what death is truly all about, okay? So let's dive right in and uh, mankind, as we know, is always wanting to know about the unknown, right? Curiosity of what we cannot see, right? What we cannot see is something that simply, you know, uh, breaks our head in pieces, right? just trying to understand and deciphering what truly goes on when we die, right? What truly happens after we die? What happened to our loved ones? Are they well? Will we be well when it happens to us, right? The uncertainty behind it makes those insecurity issues that we all have burst to the forefront because it truly makes us feel unsure, insecure, and uh, and it is unknown territory. And unknown territory always brings with it fear, fear. And fear is the base of all human issues. <laughs> it is directly related to the energy starting point called, that we studied in the past weeks, the root chakra, okay? The root chakra is the chakra, the center of security and, uh, yeah, of security of our body. And if we feel fear and insecure, it is because our root chakra needs to be addressed in some way. Okay, so we felt the fear and above all believed that we may not know what is death all about until it doesn't happen for us. Okay, so I'll say that not so, that it is, doesn't have to be this way if we truly understand, uh, if we choose not to value, leave the facts of the divine material that encompasses the whole universe. And that is none other than energy, right? I'm always speaking and teaching about energy. Oh, yes, the biggest and strongest proof we have of the existence of an afterlife is energy. And there is nothing, this is one of my quotes, there is nothing more occult, mysterious, mystical, or esoteric than energy because we also cannot see it at plain sight, right? And even today, scientists discover and learn new things about it, about energy. 
every single day that simply doesn't stop to amaze them, okay? And you, you know what? We'll never stop learning. We'll never stop learning about energy and discovering new things because energy is ruled by laws. And one of the laws is that energy is in constant progressive vibration and movement. It's always growing. And that is what evolution is all about. That's what we came to do to this world, right? To this plane. We came to evolve. There is no evolution if we don't grow. We don't evolve backwards, right? So we need to expand. We need to learn. We need to grow. Energy is in constant movement, constant expansion. So if it is always growing we'll never get to know everything about it because it keeps on non-stop 24 7 non-stop growth 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 so why i say that energy is the biggest proof for an afterlife to exist well the first thing is as i said the law the laws that rule, that govern energy. Second law is this law of vibration, which states that energy, as I said, is in constant movement and vibration. In other words, atoms, atoms have kinesis, movement, energy, and simply cannot, listen to me well, cannot stop moving so they're constantly moving and, and also there's another law that we know the law of oneness which is the first universal law that states it has to do with the law of thermal dynamics in science that states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed only can be transformed so if we truly know this law and truly believe that we are energy that we are atoms what is there to doubt about an afterlife existing think about it now what do we and our loved ones that have passed transform into what do we transform into and the answer to this question is the simple answer to it is to atoms and to light particles the problem we truly have is that we have attributed the spark of life to what doesn't produce life we have attributed it to biology aspects right when truly life is produced and provided by the vibrational frequencies of the atom and the charge inside the atom. So the atom is alive, is in movement, has life within it. And it is our building block, the building block of everything that exists, everything. So, vibrational frequency in the quantum particles, or small, right? Quantum means very, 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 very small, right? Particles of the atom is life at its best organic state. The atom is alive and has the igniters or what produces the spark of life as we have known it. It's not the biology. The biology is a result of these frequencies, the manifestation of these vibrational frequencies, okay? But we have not believed it to be in this way that I'm telling right now. 
that I'm speaking about right now, we are unable to see the truth behind the facts that the number one reason you and I and everybody here was born out of water is because the best conductor of energy or of electromagnetism or of electricity is water. And we've also known that without water, there can't be life. There can't be life. This is why other planets don't have life because there is no, they haven't been able to find water. So our bodies also are 70% water as we know. And the, the globe, Mother Earth, has also the same amount, 70% water. Mother Earth, same as our body. That's not a coincidence also. These two, energy and water, have an entanglement that simply can't be broken because one acts like the producer or effector of energy or in that vibration, right, frequency and charge, and the other one acts as the medium, the conductor or the medium to transport and conduce electricity or electromagnetic waves, okay? So for us human, these vibrational frequencies translate into, so when we're manifested, these vibrational frequencies are experienced by us through energy in motion, which is E- emotions, feelings. That's why everything we learn, we learn through experiencing, emoting, feeling. If we didn't feel, we cannot experience. We are emotional we beings, okay? We cannot experience life if we don't feel, if we don't have sensations, if we don't have feelings and emotions, we are not alive. And they are vibrational frequencies. Feelings are the proof of life. So it's not a, I think, therefore I am. It is, I feel, therefore I am. It is because we feel that we are alive. So, and consciousness is a state the state of total awareness and of knowing. And to be aware of something, of anything, right? We need to experience, we need to feel it. And to experience, feel, right? So consciousness is also a vibrational frequency. Okay? Everything is vibrational frequency in this world, in this universe, okay? Consciousness is a mix of information or vibrational frequencies resulting from the exchange and the processing of our brain, of our current and past experiences, and of the exterior or outside vibrational frequencies that we receive because everything is frequency we are emitting and we are receiving from everything everybody the cosmos everything is we don't but okay so we are in constant exchange of frequencies so, in the vibrational frequencies of the atom, there is countless amounts of encoded information, intelligence. Information equals intelligence. Information that is processed and interpreted by our brains. The only thing is that this information is encoded, okay, in math codes. 
And that's how our brain receives this information through our emotions, through our emotions, and it processes them, okay? So the point of ignition of life in the human body is in the plasma of our blood. And I've talked about this before, and for the ones that are interested, you can go back my videos, my previous. And this is the point of connection with the biological parts with our body, okay? It is in the plasma of the blood and the gamma-based in gamma globulin. Because we have gamma, gamma rays in our gamma globulin that we, they are vibrational frequencies, again, that we receive life, life as we know it, that the body is ignited with life. So at our core and most organic and authentic selves, we are energy, we are light, we are vibrational and emotional frequencies that is what we truly are that cannot be destroyed and that it is in these frequencies where the spark of life starts being love ding ding the favorite state and highest vibration experienced because as we know the best moment if we recall the best moment in our lives when we felt the best is where we are we feel deep love unconditional love for someone or somebody so these vibrations are really high so we came here to this plane to experience evolution or growth learning through emotional experiences or vibrations that are taking us to learn about love, which is the highest vibration there is. That's why in the word evolution, the first four letters of that word, if you look, if you take them back, backwards, if you read them backwards, it says love. We are evolving and learning about that highest vibration there is love. So, so, for those that want to have more of this proof that there is an afterlife, there is substantial amount of NDEs, OBEs, STEs documented and studied to corroborate the afterlife also we have a lot of proof about this okay thousands and thousands if you go to youtube you're gonna be amazed of the quantity okay of information there is and we also know that our fundamental ancestors and ancient civilizations firmly believed spoke and documented in their hieroglyphics, in the scriptures, original scriptures, and writings also, okay? So, from both, we have also the proof from both doctors and scientists that have had NDEs, near-death experiences, also OBEs and STs. OBEs are out-of-body experiences, and STEs are spiritual transformative experiences. And these experiences don't discriminate, you know, uh, on the type of people experiencing them. Because, and the, the uh, any, we know people like doctors, right? Like Ryan Wise, which is an author and, he, and, and he's a psychiatrist was reading about this and was a skept was a skept total skeptic about afterlife and all these things because he was he claimed to be an atheist before and now he knows right and now he writes about this and teaches about this all the time and other and the neuroscientist and the neuro doctor a neurosurgeon dr evan alexander also 
Also, I say that Nikola Tesla and his knowledge of energy, he was, he was connected. He had a lot of experiences in order to do and manifest and create the things he knew about energy and how he dominated the subject, okay? So scientists are trying right now, current scientists are trying to explain and to attribute NDEs or near-death experiences to a natural process of the brain after death and to speculate, to say that it is a temporary thing instead. Uh, instead of one that is eternal, okay? That is eternal. But then we, we need to ask them, right? How do we explain the hundreds and thousands of hundreds of accounts of out-of-body experiences and spiritual uh, transformative experiences that so many other thousands, if not millions of people have experienced which these people have not died, they're alive, they're living these experiences, okay? Uh, so they haven't been clinically dead. So scientists and people who believe in this way need to go back and revise their scientific fundamental knowledge of energy because uh, uh, they're not being able, you know, about not being able to be energy be destroyed and for once and all get their theories aligned and not contradict themselves so much right because they have been the ones to say that the atom cannot be destroyed and if everything is made out of atoms well that means and if atoms are in constant vibration and cannot be stopped that means that we cannot be destroyed because we are made out of them, okay? This is our divine material. As long as they keep focusing on biology and chemistry, their answers will only address, again, manifestations, symptoms, or results, and not the fundamental root causes and answers we are wanting to obtain. Atoms are not physical. They have said this, it's scientists, not me. They are not solid matter. They are composed of quantum particles of light with vibrational frequencies that and, and charges that bond and hold everything together like a glue that glues everything together. And this is how we manifest and, and bring to this reality everything. We combine atoms, combine molecules with frequency that attach to one another and the things manifest, okay? So, we are manifestations of our mothers and our fathers, okay? Of our biological mothers and fathers. So, we also know and have countless of accounts of children and proof of reincarnation. And for those that are curious, curious enough and want to know more about this LMN channel. It's a channel that I, I recommend for you to watch on YouTube. On YouTube, I cover a wide array of children's sounds and the proof behind their sounds, who they used to be they remember right now to be right and remember right the soul they're carrying okay who they reincarnated who they were before and they've even met the, the, the uh, families of people they have reincarnated they go back and 
look for those family and, and there's the proof behind. There's thousands of accounts like this. And more and more each day, these are things that are going to be more normal to us. Strange things that we didn't use to understand are going to become more normal to us. Okay? There is also a lot of information about this subject of reincarnation documented and we've known about this since ancient times, ancient civilizations, as well as in the Bible also, also. A vibration or frequency is the tool of creation and we are made of it and it can simply never be detained in its evolutive path okay we are eternal energetic beings co-creating with the sentient divine material a physical temporary experience okay so with this with this information i leave you today hoping that it has been of a lot of help for anybody out there and please asking you to share to like so that many others can benefit from it asking you to also subscribe to our youtube channel where we're going to be posting a lot of other material and content that we cannot do over facebook and thanking you for being here watching me tonight and hoping to see you next week here in the mingles of evil life so see you next week love and light bye bye Thank you.